coming up on today's show. Anyone can learn to be organized. It's just a skill that is taught. Let's talk uh, about the different phases and, and kind of the unique challenges for each. And for teenagers, I really focus on that bedroom being their mini apartment. The four phases of an organized life today on Keeping You Organized. Hello and welcome to Keeping You Organized. Today we're going to take a journey through life. We're going to look at the different uh, kind of phases of life and how, you know, in each of those phases you organize just a little bit differently. You have different challenges, different things going on in life. And we're going to bring on Lisa Woodruff from Organize365.com. Lisa, welcome to Keeping You Organized. Thanks for having me, John. Now you are uh, based what, in the Cincinnati uh, area? Yes, Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, great. And when I have your book here, it's called The The Mindset of Organization, subtitled Take Back Your House One Phase at a Time. And we're going to talk about those phases here because, you know, it's like different uh, things work at different times in life. What, how have you kind of discovered this over your years as a professional organizer? Well, John, I was a born organized person and I grew up thinking you were just either organized or you weren't. But when I went to college and I became a teacher, it wasn't you either knew your math facts or you didn't. Like as a teacher, I had to teach everyone their math facts and all the other math related skills that I taught. And sometimes children would pick it up very easily or after one or two lessons. And a couple of students would need me to go through five, six or seven different ways of teaching them a math skill in order to learn it. And knowing that children could learn math, I thought, you know what, well then anyone can learn to be organized. It's just a skill that is taught. But over time, there are different ways that you teach that skill in different phases of life and different things that need to or be organized in each phase of your life. So you may have been an organized child, but can't figure out why you're not an organized 35 year old, or you were organized when you were younger and when you had children, but now that the kids are gone, you just can't seem to get anything done and you don't know why that is. Well, you know, I have to relate because I have a 12 year old who is going through like math challenges right now. And if we had time during this podcast, I'd probably ask <laughs> you for some tips on that, but we, we don't have time to talk about uh, how to teach a 12 year old math. But uh, let's talk uh, about the different phases and, and kind of the unique challenges for each and, and how you would apply um, organizing uh, techniques. So I'm imagining we're going to start and kind of go cradle to grave, huh? Sounds good to me. <laughs> so, so what's the first phase? Where are we, what age level are we going to start off at? So the first phase is childhood and it goes from birth to the age of 21, but obviously like a six month old doesn't know how to get organized. Around second grade or when they're seven, they seem to really be able to start to organize their room, especially if they do not have ADHD. If they do have ADHD, it may take until like 10, 11 or 12. But by the time a child is 12, they can learn to organize their bedroom. And I like to teach children to think about their bedroom as their mini apartment. And by the time a child is 12, they usually hang out in their bedroom a lot. They're usually on electronics a lot, hanging out with friends more than building big castles and playing with a lot of toys. And when your last child is 12 is when you can kind of eliminate the toys or at least send them to the basement or the kids rooms. They usually aren't in the living spaces anymore. And for teenagers, I really focus on that bedroom being their mini apartment. It has their memorabilia in it. It has all of the things that they are using when they're in school and socially. And they're preparing either to go to their own apartment or to college or to launch on their own when they leave the childhood phase. Yeah, well, I'm going to text my 12-year-old home and say, get on this uh, <laughs> podcast right now because we're going to learn some things. I, I want to learn some of these techniques that um, a 12-year-old could use uh, to organ uh, let's talk about organizing their room because that is an issue uh, as again of a parent of a 12 year old I'd like to learn a little bit more on how we can uh, teach some of that yeah you know I actually have a lot of children that listen to my podcast <laughs> so last June in 2016 I recorded five podcasts they were directed towards girls and we broke down organizing their mini apartment into five episodes so organizing their clothing was one episode and then organizing their schoolwork and then their toys and we went on from there and the boys there are boys listening to they're like hey i want a podcast too so in november i recorded a few more about organizing sports equipment and organizing legos but when you teach kids to organize their bedroom and it took me a long time to teach my daughter probably 18 months hmm. it's a skill 
So some kids are born organized. If you have three children or more in your home and you are not organized, one of your children is organized, but they feel defeated. Mm -hmm. And if they knew you were going to get organized, then they would start to help you get organized if you would keep it maintained. And the other kids are going to need help. So you don't want to just organize the whole bedroom. We're only going to organize clothing first. And when I organize kids' clothing, um, you know, I only organize kids' bedrooms without the mom there so that I can really figure out what's going on in that space because it's a one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. uh, organizing session. And I say to mom, you know, each of your kids has different clothing preferences and their favorite clothes are the ones that are in the washing machine. And the ones that are in the closet, they may not like. So why are we taking up valuable closet space if they don't need or don't wear these clothes? So they might need some school uniforms and church clothes that they don't like to wear, but they have to keep. But for the most part, each child, by the time they're around five or six, has the kind of clothes they like to wear. And you're kind of fighting a losing battle if you're trying to get them to wear clothes that they don't like. So part of getting your children to organize their space is to really realize they are their own unique individual person and that they will keep order in things that they like and use and want. But if they're being forced to keep extra memorabilia that they don't like, or clothing that they don't like to wear, then they get frustrated and then they don't want to organize their room as much. Now, how, how do you do that for a uh, pick? Do you sit down with the child and say, okay, do you like this or do you not like this? Do you like this? You don't yep. like to, or, or do you, is there, is it something more than that? Or is it just, or do you give them say, pick 10 things and eliminate the rest or how? How do you do it? Yeah, it's, it's just like organizing a woman's or a man's closet with them. Each, each age group and each sex has different things that work better for them. But with kids, for the most part, I, I usually start with what are your favorite clothes? What are the clothes you like to wear all the time? And like my daughter's always hot and I would always buy her sweaters and jackets. She's never going to wear sweaters and jackets. So those are easy to say, okay, well, you're always hot. You're probably not going to wear these. And we move those out. Or they'll say those tights feel bumpy and these ones feel smooth and they know what they like. And then we can quickly sort out as soon as they know they have a say, they know what they like. They've just never been able to say, I don't want this because usually the parents like, well, I just paid for it and I'm not going to go buy more. So we're going to keep it. Yeah. So how about uh, organizing the actual closet? Do you hang them by color or do you hang them by style uh, Any and, and shoes and things like that? How, how do you actually go and take what you do keep and put it in a closet or drawers? So I do usually try to hang all pants and shirts because kids will be able to see what's hanging better than what's in drawers. Of course, it all ends up on the floor when it's dirty, but that's how you know it's dirty is on the right. floor. And usually by the time we're done, they've gotten rid of more than half of their clothes. So it's much easier for them to hang them up. As far as clothes, I like or toys. I used to, I like to put those in like cubbies, mm -hmm. like little cubes or bookshelves. I think every child's room should have a bookshelf or a cube system in it. And that will grow and change as the child ages, but they really do need some more flat surfaces and little cubes to put their different items in and collections that they have growing up. And shoes, I usually just put them in a basket. Okay, that's great. Now, is there any difference between like the 12-year-old and the 17-year-old or the 19-year-old as far as uh, either tools they use or techniques they use? Yes. So by the time they're getting into like their junior year of high school, that's when I'm saying, what memorabilia do you want to keep? Mm -hmm. How much of this art? How many of these trophies do you want? What do you want to keep for your future house? And a lot of times they're willing to get rid of things or they're willing to box them up with their name on them and put them in a storage facility or in the basement or wherever the rest of the family puts their memorabilia so that they have more space for whatever they're passionate about, their sport or their makeup or mm -hmm. um, photography or whatever else they're into. And we really streamline their bedroom, kind of getting them ready for a dorm. And you know, there's not a lot of room in a dorm room. Right, right. Yeah, that's a whole, no that's a whole nother podcast right there is yeah. moving, them, moving them out. Uh, anything else for that seven to 21 year old uh, range and uh, techniques or tools? Well, as soon as they're 12 and they're really moving out of that toy stage, that's when I have them start looking at their bedroom as a mini apartment. And in a mini apartment, you have a place to sleep, you have a place for clothing, you have a place for work. Often teenagers have food in their room, so you have food, makeup that is overflow from bathroom, you know, all of those different things that you would have in a regular apartment, mm -hmm. you kind of segment out the bathroom, the bedroom for that as well. So you have like a zone maybe for each one kind of? Yep. Okay, great. Well, listen, we're going to take a quick break here, and when we come back, we'll move up to 
just a little bit older person and see what the next phase of uh, organizing your life uh, entails. We're with Lisa Woodruff, Organize365.com, talking about the four phases of organization, and we'll be right back. Now there's a place just for you. Life can be busy, and you still have to keep it all together. That's why you like to be organized and in control. Introducing MyOrganize.life, a special place where you can get ideas and solutions to organize what's important to you, your important papers, your important decisions, your important life events. We show you the ideas and products to stay organized in your life. See what's new. Stop by and say hello. Visit us at any time at www.myorganize.life. It's just for you. Myorganize.life by Smead. Find us at www.myorganize.life. Myorganize.life. We're back now and keeping you organized, talking about the four phases of organization in your life. Uh, we're talking from cradle to grave. Uh, before the break, we talked about the seven to 21 year old. Uh, we're with Lisa Woodruff, Organize365.com. And Lisa, uh, now we're ready to move on, I guess, to the adult. Now, isn't it like, hey, you're an adult now, you deal with it on your own. I can't, uh, you know, I can't tell you what to do, at least as a parent to a kid. But, you know, how would you, uh, treat a 21 to whatever, uh, how, how high are we going up here with this, uh, this age stage now? So the next phase is 21 until around the age of 35 to 40, and I call this phase accumulation. Okay. And the reason, it usually ends around 35, but you make a mental shift at 40, so I keep it all in that same age group. It's about two decades. And you're accumulating houses and spouses and kids and jobs and everything that goes along with that. So even if you don't get married and you don't have children in your 20s and 30s, you still are accumulating because you're going from that childhood bedroom we just talked about into a real apartment. And even if you just go into a real apartment with one bedroom, you now actually have a kitchen, not just where you keep your Doritos and your water bottle. And you actually have a little laundry area or laundry that needs to go down to a laundromat. And you actually have a desk or a kitchen table that you could do your work on. You're not doing that in your bedroom anymore. So your bedroom is expanding. And if you do get married and have children in your 20s and 30s, you'll probably buy a a home and that's gonna have multiple bedrooms and multiple spaces that all need to be organized. And in this phase of life, it's all about accumulating as you go through each mm -hmm. of these different new additions that you add on. Yeah, and we thought that uh, that accumulation all happened at that young age, because uh, you know the grandparents are buying toys and everything, but uh, mm -hmm. so uh, what doesn't work uh, at this stage that did work at the younger stage? So at the younger stage, you are able to purge your bedroom, get it organized on a Saturday and start all over on Sunday. Well, in this phase of life, you're usually not living by yourself. Um, often in an American household, you have a husband and 2.3 kids, I think it is, mm -hmm. and a dog. And so you go to hang a picture in your very first home and realize you don't own a hammer and nails. <laughs> and then you go to do yard work and you realize, well, we have a lawnmower, but we don't have an edger and we don't have like all the things you need to do lawn work. And so every time you go to do a project in your 20s, you end up at a department store or a um, superstore first buying a whole bunch of stuff just to get that done. And little kids come with a lot of stuff. And when you have your first baby, even if you try to do it minimalistically, it's almost impossible right. because they change their uh, the size of their diapers, the size of their clothes, the kind of food they eat, the toys that they're interested every three to four months. I mean, and you get in this pace of, OK, I'm going to do this project. I need to go buy stuff. OK, the kids are getting bigger. I need to go buy stuff. And you keep along this accumulation path until about your youngest is the age of 12. And sometimes we don't realize that we don't need to be accumulating as much and we keep accumulating long after that. Okay, so that, that just teased up for the kind of the tactics that we can use to address some of these uh, issues. Uh, what, are, what do you do when you're consulting with clients in this age range uh, on how to actually get, a, get control of that? So the biggest thing is when you're accumulating something, you need to accumulate the container it should go in. And usually when I, um, reach out to these clients is when they have a couple of young children and there are just toys everywhere. And the first thing we do is like with little girls, especially get little bags or backpacks for every single thing that they have a toy that they like. 
boys toys are almost always sold with containers if you notice mm. and girls toys are not so if they're into barbies then buy you know like little drawers to house all of their little clothes or a little backpack for everything poly pocket related boys toys they they tend to have fewer kinds of toys and yet the organizers are already there so like if you have skylanders you can put all of those in a little backpack or a box mm -hmm. or if you have legos there are lots of different lego storage solutions because boys have fewer toys but they have more of each kind of toy that mm. they have wow okay so that's good how about for the adult themselves uh and what they can do uh, let's say let's say they're at their first apartment you know they've figured out they had to run out to Target or whatever and buy way more things than they ever thought. They come back. Uh, what are some of the things you can do to kind of manage your first apartment or home? So you should definitely go get a toolbox. We often will buy tools and no toolbox. So buy a toolbox and once your tools outgrow that toolbox, maybe you need a second one. One that's gonna be the in-house tools and one that's gonna be out of house tools, that kind of a thing. And also often in your 20s, you'll have a lot of passion projects before you have children. Hmm. You might do crafting or yawn or running or whatever you're into as far as your crafts are. So buy containers for those crafts and cull those crafts twice a year. So hmm. twice a year, go through and cull out those crafts and buy better organizers. So as your craft organization grows, so does all of the organizers that you use to organize those items. Right, now you touched on too about uh, oftentimes when someone is in their first place, they're living with somebody else, whether it's a family member, friend, roommate. How do you get them on the same page with you? Uh, are there any techniques or have you been in an experience like that before where one person really wants to do it, maybe the other person not so much? H how do you get them to work together? So this is common. I work with a lot of women online that go through my course to organize their home and they will say, I don't want to get started because my spouse is, isn't going to follow along or my kids aren't going to follow along. And I'll say, yes, they will. <laughs> they absolutely will. Don't organize them, just organize yourself. And as you really start to get organized and they could see you mean it and it's lasting and it's not just a weekend fad, like you're on week number three and you're still getting organized, they will follow along and they will maintain the order that you set, especially if you label it. Right. So often um, the woman sets the pace in the house. And so if she decides to get organized and she means business, then the spouse and the kids will follow along. Wow. Anything else for this accumulation phase uh, that you want to just get in uh, either a technique or a tool? I, I think again, you know, I mentioned a bookshelf or a cubby system for the kids. The same is true in this phase of life. You're going to need more bookshelves and cubby systems and places to really have homes for everything. Right. When you bring it into your home, make it have a home. And if it doesn't have one, then you need to create it. Okay, great. Well, I can see we're not going to get through all four in this particular episode. So are you willing to come back for a second half? Of course. Good. Well, before we go, just tell a little bit uh, about uh, Organize 365, your business, what kind of clients you work with and how people can get a hold of you. So predominantly I work online now. Organize 365 is a podcast and a blog and books. And my motto is everyone can get organized, progress over perfection and done is better than perfect. I'm not trying to help you get a Pinterest perfect house or that a magazine could come and take pictures, but just that you can get organized. You can live an organized life and the more organized you are, the more productive you'll be. Well, that is great. Well, Lisa, we've got two more phases of life we're going to cover on our next episode. So I'm excited to get to that and folks come back for that. And we'll see you next time on Keeping You Organized.